Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. I'm here on a solo mission. I got stuck on account of that. Well, if the if the thing for the thing don't get you, the blade ski sure will. Remember these? Ah, misspent youth. I come to the shop on a solo tip for laying pipe, getting tired of doing it at home. <laughs> we're all pulling together, but I got a feeling we pull any harder, we're gonna pull the head of her clean off, leave a mushroom shaped purple bruise on your forehead speaking to talking to my buddy the emerge doc they ain't up to much surprisingly just a whole lot of meetings but i asked him hey have a look at this i think uh i think i've been overusing it <laughs> he says to me you're not making play-doh snakes i'm running airlines i got this stuff packed straight as a corkscrew cock and red to boot i gotta straighten it out because it's uh you know it's style you gotta make it, it's not rated for air, mind you, but it is rated for water, and uh, your mileage might vary, but what better time to demonstrate the two knots, which you use 99% of the time, is when you got time in betwixt uh, contemplating suck starting a 12 gauge, 410 to do the job, but ain't no kill like overkill. You get a chance to practice these two knots. You know, you go on site and these old fellas, they can identify bolts and the sizes of wrenches by eye, they do the rigging and all that. There's only two knots that I consistently use. I also use the granny knot, which is a very dangerous knot. This is technically an overhand knot. You'll all recognize this. It's the knot that either slips or never comes apart again. You need a Manitoba Marlin spike to get her. So this is a beginner knot. We don't use this because there's two better knots. And a point of order, actually one's gonna be a hitch. A hitch is a knot that is tying to something and a knot is tying to another line. That is another rope. <laughs> On the subject of wheel knots, we also have the overhand loop. A wheel knot, of course, being a knot in your butt hair that will not come out. But in this case, this once you put some pressure on this, this knot will never cut. You, you'll see, you know, you'll see young guys fighting with these knots to try and get them out because uh, they're all tightened up. And it's, it's a lot of times better just to cut the useless thing right off. But, you know, you got some of that cheap plastic, uh, what is it, yellow nylon rope. You know, that's, that stuff's pretty dear. You, you got to save what you can. That nylon rope, I don't care for it either because it doesn't make very nice knots. It doesn't bend nicely. It's just it's the minimum viable rope possible. If you can, buy yourself some decent rope, uh, at least to play with. The most important knot you will use 99% of the time is a bowline, also known as a bow line. Don't disparage a man just because he mispronounces something. It just means that he learned it from a book that is autodidactically, which is quite noble in and of itself. You have a look at that. Now it's tight, tightens right up, but it doesn't tighten on itself. You can always loosen it off. I gotta stop here. I would like to say that this is premeditated. However, you will not find a larger group of pedantic bores than weekend warrior knot tires and gun nerds. So this perfectly illustrates, however, the real power of the bowling is that you can fuck it up and it just turns into another knot. So what I was tying there was actually called a Cossack knot. And if you mess it up, so I haven't told the old bunny joke since I ended up with a gin Caesar dripping down my face with my pockets turned out. Here's the little story about the bunny. Of course, because we're humans and we have millennia of oral history, we remember things quite a bit better when we tell stories about it. Here's the tree. Under the tree is a bunny hole. The bunny pops its head from under to top. Or is that from top to under? From under to top, I believe. It's going to work out anyway. Then goes right round the stump of the tree, sees something, and back in the hole. And you just pull it like that. Now you see what happened there. There is a possibility with the bowling that the tag end works its way out or it's not long enough. So the knot I was actually doing was called a Cossack knot or a, a cowboy, a Sitka knot or a Sitka. Uh, uh, there's a whole bunch of names for it. But the real beauty of the bowling is that even if you fuck it up, 
you know, you're not going to tie this every day. If you tie it every day, you're going to get it right. But if you go months in betwixt the between of tying the thing, and then you go to pick it up and you tie it, it's still going to work. As long as it bites, it's still going to work. So I'll demonstrate the Cossack knot here. Just like that. And that still tightens right up and you'll notice the tag end is outside of the loop. So <laughs> the real power, I would say, of the bowline, bowline, is that it's so geezless easy to, to, to fuck up, but it still is a perfectly cromulent knot. I call this a, a Dutch uh, bowline as well. Apparently because this could get a whole bunch of North Sea ice on it and you'd still be able to extricate it out of the loop. That was the bowling. 99% of your needs right there, unless you're trying to impress the ladies auxiliary at the sailing regatta. This here is going to be a hitch and I've heard it referred to as a timber hitch, which is a little bit more complicated of a, of a thing, but this is a marling hitch. Mar and marl is into knot up and a hitch, of course, connects not to the line, but to an object. Now, this is very slippery, and this will be very hard to pull taut to get the, the twist out of her. But I'm going to show you this very useful knot, and it's super, super simple. We use the much maligned overhand knot, and we just use a treble of them. There's the overhand knot. We move down a little bit. We use this for pulling cables, pulling long hoses, pulling, pulling anything that's an oddball shape works a treat. Granted, this is the worst case scenario. The OD of the pipe is pretty close comparatively to the OD of the, you know, it's small and the rope is fairly large compared to this diameter. Also, it's self-lubricating, plastic on plastic. Now you can see if we're if it's going to jiggle around, this is just for a pole mine. This is not to make it last forever. But if it's jiggling around, it is going to walk on you. There's a little trick we can do here. We take some Alec Chickens tape. Now through every successive overhand knot, there's less and less force on this back end. This is just to anchor it so that it bites. Now, if I need to remind you that you don't stand under a suspended load, this is for pulling. And especially if all you got going for you is a little bit of vinyl tape holding the whole works together, <laughs> you might want to be a little bit careful. On the one end, Forky McForkface has a hanker. We got the bowling. How else, I ask you, would you attempt to pull that without knowing this knot? What would you do? Drill a hole in it, maybe? Put a fitting in there? Clamp? Pipe clamp, something like that. Here, all we got is a marl ing hitch. On the other end, we got the old Snake River trailer. Blood of my baney existence. Huh? Over here to a come along. about as tight as I want to go. Twang! <laughs> got a high C happening. Check out the cantonary on that. Poing! Not tea bag. What's happening is starting to squeeze this so that the material is failing and of course it's not going to be the knot that fails. The trick is to get this tag line bit in and off so that this guy doesn't move and then this guy doesn't move and this guy and it just squeezes harder and harder and harder. If you had a material like wood or something, you know, something with a little stiction to it, like steel, you wouldn't need to do this, but being as how it's plastic on plastic. You see, this end just had the wee tagline on there, so I had to take a second kick at the cat. Don't neglect, if you're pulling wire or cable or something like that, that it's got lubrication, some wax on it from the vulcanization process when they spit it out of the factory and it's jacketed in lead in order to vulcanize it. There's some talc and some wax and shit, all kinds of stuff in there from the process makes it more slippery. A parting word of knowledge from someone what taught me this a long time ago, rigor. I'm going to teach you now, each one teach one type deal. If 
you got to look at it. If the thing fails, what is it going to hurt? You got to consider that. And if somebody's a person or whatever is going to get hurt, then you need to increase the chooch factor to make sure that it doesn't fail. So the overhand knot, which we all use, we use as a crutch, forget about it. Use the bowlin. Unless we're doing a marling hitch. And then the overhand comes in mighty handy. So thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.